When we encounter simple types such as strings and numbers, our code executes synchronously. This means each command executes in the order in which it is listed in the program. So if we were to combine both values and lock them, everything works just fine. But when dealing with network requests such as API calls or just reading files, such tasks are time consuming and do not return their results right away. And this form of execution is not synchronous but asynchronous in nature. And that's where promises come into the picture. In JavaScript, a promise is a way to handle asynchronous code. Asynchronous code is code that doesn't execute immediately, but instead waits for something else to happen, like a network request or a file read. Promises help us manage this kind of information by giving us a way to represent the eventual result of an asynchronous operation. Now a promise can have one of three states, pending, fulfilled or rejected. When we create a promise, it starts out in the pending state. Eventually, the promise will either be fulfilled with a value or rejected with an error. Let's take an example. I will use the Axios request library and use the get method to get a to-do object from this to-do's endpoint. Now if I try to console the response right away, instead of getting the to-do object, we get a promise object which is in pending state. This means it's waiting to be fulfilled or rejected. So how do we receive the to-do object from the API endpoint? Well, JavaScript gives us two ways to wait until a task is finished and use the result or catch any errors that occur. The first way is by using dot then and dot catch method. Dot then is called when the task is complete and doesn't throw an error. The dot then receives a parameter in its callback which contains the result from the API, which in our case is the to-do object. Dot catch is called when the task is complete but throws an error. So if anything goes wrong while processing the request, the catch method is called which also receives a parameter in its callback and contains the error that occurred while processing the request. Alright, so now let's remove the old code and call the endpoint using a get method. Now because get returns a promise object, we can immediately chain onto the then method. Inside our then method, we will console log the result.data from the API, since the data property in result contains the to-do object. Then after this, we can chain onto the catch method. This will be called if anything goes wrong while processing our request. I will console log the error.response.status text message that is received from the parameter here. Then we can run this and see that our console log executes properly. And since there is no obvious error, we get the to-do object logged out. Now to simulate an error just so we can enter the dot catch method, I will modify the endpoint to something that doesn't exist and call it to-dos with a z. Now if I run the code, you can see error gets printed out with a value of not found. So this means the code went into the dot catch block because the API endpoint itself was wasn't processed correctly. Now an important thing to note is, any code placed after this promise chain will be executed immediately. So if we put a console log here at the bottom, we would expect it to be logged out after our API request returns a value, but instead, the console value gets printed out first. That's because the code inside dot then and catch methods is executed asynchronously, which is after the API request is returned. And the execution of any code outside of dot then and dot catch won't be interrupted. So here the console log outside doesn't wait for the API request to be processed and gets executed first thereby working asynchronously instead of working synchronously as explained in the first example where each command executes in the order in which it is listed. Now this works fine but the code doesn't look so good and if you had a lot of complicated code inside your methods things would soon start to get quite messy. By messy I mean if you were working with multiple APIs you often have to chain multiple promises resulting in callbacks nested inside callbacks resulting in what we call a callback hell. So to avoid callback hell we need a way of receiving the results of our promises synchronously, just as if we were dealing with simple types like strings and numbers. And this is where the async await keyword comes in. The keyword async ensures the function will always return a promise and await does exactly what it says. It allows us to wait until the promise has been completed before moving on to the next line. This makes our code a lot cleaner and easier to read. JavaScript requires that await keywords be used inside functions marked with the async keyword. So let's replace our promise chain with a function prefixed with the async keyword. Let's call it get to do and now we are going to make the same get request to our to do API. Notice we have the await keyword before the method call and immediately on our next line of code we can use the result and log out the response from the API. This console log will not run until the promise resolves or is returned. Now let's call our get to do function. Then run the code and we will see that our code executes perfectly. Now one might wonder how errors are handled when it comes to async await since there is no dot catch method available in this case. Well, because our code executes 
execute synchronously, we can just wrap this with a normal try catch block. Inside our catch method, we can just log out to the console the error. Now I'll again rename the endpoint to todos with a Z to simulate an error in processing the request and console log the error.response.status text. And then I'll run the code. Now notice our request error has been nicely caught and logged out to the console. So that's all about promises using dot then dot catch and async await method. I hope this cleared all your doubts regarding JavaScript promises. Feel free to comment down your queries if you have any. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.